Hi, this is Hugh for the Mini Specialist, and today I'm going to show you how to change the cam chain on an R56 Mini Cooper. So the one behind me uh, is showing all the, the symptoms that I would expect from a cam chain failure, and I'll run through them with you, uh, give you an idea. The most obvious one is uh, the rattle, which uh, you'll get not on acceleration, but when the car is decreasing the revs, because at that point the chain is not under tension anymore. Uh, but on a Cooper S, you'll probably hear that, uh, more so than a Cooper. This particular car is a Cooper, 122 horsepower, 2010 car, uh, petrol engine of course, and you don't get the uh, rattle on that. What we get on this is very poor, a uh, car won't tick over. It, uh, it, it hunts all over the place. And I'm just gonna scan it now, and I'll show you what the readings are. But it, uh, it normally comes up with a Vanos stop error on the exhaust. All right, so I've uh, scanned the, uh, the car, and this is the the main one is going to be in DME Motor Electronics. DME is uh, basically the ECU. So we're going to go into that and see what the read, what the codes are. Immediately, the top one says Vanos Exhaust Actuator Movement. That is the main fault that indicates um, the cam chain. So I've taken uh, the, the coil packs out on this car and some of the nuts, but nothing much more. This is the Vanos for the exhaust, um, and it plugs in to the loom, like so. And the Vanos and the exhaust moves the cam, moves the cams, moves the exhaust cam, in fact, and that's the that Vanos for the inlet. Now, the error code is the Vanos exhaust stop. Well, that is almost always indicates the, the, the cam chain needs changing, and uh, let me show you why. So this engine is the identical engine to the one that's in the car, and this is the exhaust Vanos solenoid. It's uh, driven by an electrical signal and oil pressure, and what it does is exactly the same as the inlet Vanos. It moves these, ca these cogs in relation to the cam so it could change the cam timing. The reason why the error comes up on the Vanos well, the chain isn't electrical, it clearly can't send a signal. And what this is trying to do is adjust the valve timing uh, to be the correct one, but it's run out of movement. Basically, the chain's too long for this movement to actually correct. And so it says, can't do this anymore. And then the timing's out and the engine runs rough. So that's the main um, error code that tells you the timing the chain is out, the chain is uh, worn. Main components of uh, the timing chain and the change, so we're gonna need a tool to lock the cams. Don't try to do this job without that tool. Uh, it can cause major problems if you get it wrong later. Um, this uh, is normally screwed in all the way. This is the cam chain tensioner. Now these need replacing with the cam chain. They're oil, pressure, and spring. And that pushes against the valve Sorry, the, uh, the, the chain guide, which is the plastic thing that's in there. The other thing is you've got, when you remove the cam chain, what you need to do is to remove this bottom crank bolt, which sits in there. This cog is the bottom end of the chain, okay? And it's only pressure that holds that to still. The one major mistake that people make when they put the car back together, don't torque up this nut properly. This can then spin, your timing goes out, and then you hit the valves and you need to replace the head or, or have the head reconditioned. So that's a major um, fault if you get that wrong. Now, these are guides which go into there and the same there. So to get to these, we need to strip quite a lot of the car and I'll go into that. So to gain access to this part of the engine, what we're going to do is we're gonna remove this top engine bracket and put a jack under the engine so we can move it up and down so this can be moved up and down so we can get access to the bolts when you take off. To do that, the first job is when you take out this wheel arch liner and uh, watch the separate video for that, for the easy way of doing that. In, we need to take this off, uh, and we'll do that shortly. We take the rocker cover off, we'll take the spot plugs out, that allows us to, to crank the engine over more easily. So let's get on to that. In terms of tools you need, uh, a couple of pry tools, very useful. This will probably come in valuable. It's a magnet on a telescopic arm. Uh, at some point you'll need it. A breaker bar. There's gonna be some uh, significant uh, torque, torqued up nuts you need to undo. You need a torx kit. You're gonna need a timing tool kit. Now I've got a few. Now, 
be aware that these are different for different engines. So this is the N12 engine in this car. It's a Cooper pre-face lift. So the N12, and this is an N12 timing tool kit for the 1.4 and 1.6 N12 engine. They're different, uh, the N18, the N16, they're all different uh, timing tool kits. This is a crank uh, pinning tool. So you need to pin the crank. So you need one of those. Now the other thing you of course need is a good torque wrench. This one is a digital one. Uh, it's, uh, it's very good on the torque. It's, it's, it says it does angles. It's actually not very good on the angles, but it does do everything else I need. You'll also need uh, one of these tools to remove the uh, auxiliary belt. This goes onto the nut, which is actually just down there. And that allows you to turn that, put the pin in to remove the auxiliary belt. Right, so before we go much further, we need to remove the throttle body, which is this thing. And the, and the reason is, if I go to our engine that's out of the car, the throttle body restricts the removal of the cam chain tensioner. So we can't get that out while the throttle body's on. It's quite easy to see from here, you've got one, two, three, four, five, 13 mil bolts to hold the throttle body on. That's easy. What's not easy is down here, you've got this little sucker here that's onto the back of the engine. Um, uh, so either this one, either this one or this one needs to be removed to get the throttle body off and it's difficult to get to when the engine's in the car. Let me show you. So quite clearly, I've got a, a lift. If you haven't got a lift, this is a lot more difficult and I've got the wheel lights liner out. Now what I want to show you is the bolt that you need to remove. Let me get a pointer. Okay, so like I said, it's difficult to get to and what we need to do is to get to that one there, right? So that bolt there is the underside of the throttle body. That needs to be removed for the throttle body to come out. And it's difficult to get to. So what I can say is get a long reach uh, socket or very thin arms. I'm now going to remove the throttle body, which is this. And the first of all I'm going to do is remove this uh, intake here. So seven mil socket on a ratchet just removes that, gets it nice and out of the way. Take the electrical connection off uh, the inlet the Vanos. And I've got this nice tool to remove my 13 mil bolts, uh, which hold the throttle body on. Be careful with this pipe, it can easily get broken and uh, it won't, the engine won't like it if it's broken. 30mm box spanner to get onto those bolts because there's quite a long thread. Right. I have now um, unbolted the throttle body. I don't need to remove it out of the way completely. In fact, it's still connected to things underneath. But all I need is access to uh, the cam chain tensioner which is right here so now I can get a, a socket on it and that's okay. Right so what we need to do is to remote, rotate the engine now until we see this writing on here on here and when that is upright this cam face that square bit there will be vertical and vertical will be able to put the cam chain locking tool on. So what I need to do now is to rotate the engine in the car using the crank bolt until we see this, and then we can pin the crank underneath. So let's do that now. It's, that's an 18 mil socket. So without the plugs in, this should be quite easy to turn. So what I'm gonna do is rotate the engine. I'm gonna rotate the engine now until we see that writing on that camshaft, on both camshafts in fact. Okay, it's coming up to the top now. Now that's interesting because that and that are misaligned. Let's go backwards, see if it changes anything. No, the timing's out on this car. Look at that. Okay, well anyway, that and that should be vertical. That should be upright. I should be able to pin the crank now. So we're going to pin the crank and then we're going to put the timing tool on the top. This is the locking tool and I need to get to that hole right there. Right, so we pin the crank and now we're going to do the top end. So on here, first of all, I've 
what I've done is I've put these uh, coal packs in the bores. There's no spark plugs in there, and I guarantee you, if you drop something down there, it's a poorly day. So that just prevents any mishaps there. So the next stage is, is to put the timing tool on, and they go onto these square sections here, like so, and there. And if the timing is correct, these should fit easily. If they don't, then you need to move the cranks around. But you'll be able to do it at the moment because this cog is still on. Then we're going to put the bolts in to hold the timing tool down in one piece. So just finger tight, and then I'm going to tighten it up with uh, my drill here. But uh, these three bolts just hold the timing tool in place. Time tool's on, that means everything's locked. That means I can now disconnect the chain. Before we do that though, I'm gonna take this top engine mount off. So this is gonna be a very, I'm not gonna talk through this, I'm just gonna do it and then speed things up. I'm gonna take off this, the grill, um, the, the headlights if they come off it and always, and then expose this area here. So that's what I'm gonna do now. As we've taken off this headlight, I'm just going to remove it so it's safe. This one I have to leave in place because this capture bolt is seized on this side and I can't remove it. But that's okay. I can now get to this top engine mount. So that's where we need to be. Before we carry on further, I'll move this belt here. So this drives the alternator and the air conditioner. And so that needs to come off. And to do that, I need to get the car in the air and then I'll put a jack underneath and then take off that top engine mount and then I can't really move the car up and down. Stop. Do something like it and I'm going to put it from the underside onto this bolt here and just push it away and put my hand through and press that pin in and now that's pinned. Come down here. And now you can see this belt is loose and I can remove it. The other thing you need to do, remove, pull this out. This is like a zip thing and it releases tension off uh, the belt and there's a little hook, a little, eye, a little hole in the belt and if you get it right, it should just latch out of the way, like so. And that allows me to remove the belt completely. The wood pop tension is now untensioned, if that's the right word. So now I remove that belt. Inspect this belt while you're at it, okay, because they're very cheap and while it's off, if it needs replacing, I suggest replacing it. Because that was so difficult to see, I'm gonna show you on this engine that's out of the car. So what we just did is we released this uh, thing here and just latched it on like so. What this does, it sits there and it engages the pump, the water pump, which sits here. So what we've done is we've got underneath, pulled that out, latched it on the little zip catch there, so it's out of the way. Our next job will be to remove this because we need to get to these two bits here. So that's our next job. Okay, so we've uh, detensioned this uh, water pump engagement device. I'm now gonna take off this bottom flywheel with an E10 torque socket. So that goes on there and I'm gonna remove that. Now, all right, so that's our bottom flywheel. I'm just going to put these E10 bolts in it like that so we don't lose them and set it aside. Our next job is to remove this device here, this electronic tensioner, which is three bolts one, two, and three. And because they're way up there, we're going to remove the top engine mount, put a jack underneath the, cut the engine and lower the engine down. So well, I bought myself this uh, Vera or Wera little kit. And this is a very, very small um, little socket set with a very small profile that allows me to get up inside that small area. Um, it is very, very difficult to do without this. 
it's actually quite difficult to do even with this, but it makes it a lot easier. If I can get to the one 10 mil bolt quite easily here, but to get to the top ones, I'm gonna have to do it from the other side, as in looking down on the engine. Uh, otherwise, I'm not gonna be able to get anything on it, which uh, makes life difficult. So I'm just doing this while the car's up in the air and I can see what I'm doing. Okay, that's the first one. All right, so with the car low, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this top engine bracket, which means I've got a jack under the car, all right, a block of wood on the sump there, just to support it. I'm gonna put a bit of pressure on it, take this big bolt off. This is an eight, the first one's an 18 mil. Can we close this so you can see? And that one, take this off. Now, basically, because that rests onto the lower thing, I, when I jack the engine, that will raise and take the pressure off that joint. So when I take these 13 mil bolts out, there's no pressure on them. So I'll do that now. This is an earth strap. You take this off, put your finger underneath, because the, the bolt underneath will drop out. And I'll just bolt it back on so we don't lose it. And then we take out these four 13 mil bolts. And that comes out. Take out one, two, three, four Torx bolts. Are, I think E12s. Yeah, so those are E12s. E12 and e pressure on this bracket. So now that uh, the, the engine is supported by the jack, there's two lower down as well. So we need to get to those. So this one actually won't actually come out until we remove two 10 mil bolts. Yeah. Remove that 10 mil and that 10 mil, which hold the wiring loom. So I'm gonna get my little uh, low profile ratchet again and just take these off. This one, and the other one is this side. This is just a, a support bracket for the uh, some wiring that goes to the alternator. Just tight down here. And when you pull the bracket out, I, what I always do is I put these two 10 mil bolts back in the holes here so they don't get lost. So now we have a lot more access to our uh, tensioner. So. This here now is the top bolt on the tensioner. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to jack the engine up to get to that top bolt. Moves quite a way. And now I can get my little ratchet on that top bolt. Right, so now I can get to this top bolt like this. So that's good. So now I can push that. It comes off nicely. This is really not a lot of space down there, so this low profile uh, little socket set is excellent for this. And it's always worth trying to grab something that's a bit loose like this with your magnet tool so you don't lose it. Good, so I'm now gonna drop the engine down so I can move this. Now there is an electrical connector there, it's quite difficult to get to. You might be able to get to it from the top. Yeah, so that's just taken off. And now I'm gonna lower the engine and by lowering the engine, I get the space to remove uh, that, or that tensioner. So I'm gonna lower the engine slowly. And now we can pull this out. 
like so. And that gives us access now to these two tensioner, to these two bolts here that we need to uh, remove to get the cam chain out. We've now got the engine mount off. We're now going to take off this guide. We're going to then undo these two bolts, which are E14, those two bolts there. Take these two uh, cogs off. We're going to support the chain. That's what this wire is for. We're going to support the chain while those are off. And then we're going to take off the other elements of the, uh, of the system to, to be able to really pull out the chain. So the first thing to do is to get these two 8mm bolts out. Being careful not to drop them anywhere. For the guide. Set aside. And then I'm going to get a breaker bar to take these off. That should be, they should be very tight. So here's my E14 socket. My breaker bar and to take these off. Actually, what I've forgotten to do, which I should do first, is remove the cam chain tensioner. So I'm just going to leave that, take the cam chain tensioner off now. Right, so what I'm going to do is take off uh, this cam chain tensioner. It's a 27mm socket, and if I can just Break it. There we go. So once it's once it's um, once you've cracked it, you should be able to get. Well, I like using my electric thingy. So that will now flip onto it, and I can just zoom that out. Very quickly. So one cam chain tensioner removed. That's that one. So we can set that aside and we'll replace that. So now that's done, I can remove these because there's no tension on the chain. So one thing I don't want to do is drop anything down uh, into the bottom of the engine, so I'm being very careful when I take this out. And that should just come away. Now the chain is loose. So that's the inlet, so that's actually marked IN, and to keep that safe, um, I'm using my cord, I'm just going to knot this so that uh, we don't drop the chain down the hole. So why don't I listen to Arcala more in Scouts when I was learning knotting, I don't know. So that should come off now. There we go, that's my cam chain loose and my this one is marked EX30. I need to remove the three retaining pins and the dipstick, strangely enough. So I'm just going to pull that out now so it's all out of the way. So what I've got here is every extension I've got all linked together. So I go through the wheel arch behind the headlight onto that uh, fixing. And now I'm going to use my uh, impact driver here just to remove that. And that makes life quite easy because we've got the torque on it. So that's the first one. Okay, so now to proceed, we need to remove this crank bolt with an 18mm. And I'm going to drop the engine down on the jack to access the two retaining bolts there. So I'll lower the car now. To lower the engine, I've exposed these two uh, location pins and now I'm going to remove them all. So the crank's pinned and I'm using a breaker bar and an 18mm socket to undo this bottom um, bolt, which clamps the cog which holds the bottom part of the cam chain. So that's now loose. Okay. And now, so that's the crank fault. And then we need to remove these two pins. They are T40s. And by lowering the engine, you should access them quite easily. So, that's one.
that's two. And now the chain should be free. So provided you remove the dipstick and, and those three pins, this should now lift out and there's your old chain. So this is a cam chain from another car and in this case the cam chain guide has actually split apart and broken and you can see there's bits missing from here. Uh, this is a turbocharged car, it's the N14 engine and these bits of plastic have dropped into the sump blocking the oil uh, scavenger pump and so I did have to drop the sump on this car. So I just wanted to include this because uh, it's actually one of the worst cases I've seen. Um, I removed the sump and um, quite interestingly there's a lot of oil left in the sump despite draining the sump and those are the bits of plastic you can see in there so I just drain them away it, it's pretty horrible to look at and so uh, this is what happens when your cam chain guide breaks down that's your oil scavenger pump being partially blocked by bits of plastic you have to remove them if you don't then you get all starvation in the car and if it's a turbocharged car the first thing it'll die is your turbo and that's an expensive component to replace. So I just wanted to include this. I thought it was useful uh, in the worst case scenario. This is what can happen. Right, so let's get back over to uh, the main part of this video. This is our new cam chain kit, and as you can see, it comes in lots of different pieces. So I'm gonna remove the packaging. So the chain runs on that groove and that groove, and these go together. So to join them, turn it all the way around so that they like 180 degrees opposite and these should link in and there's two little guides and when you turn it back they should stay together so they should be in little grooves and that's how that goes. The chain we do now is put our cog into the chain and feed the chain up uh, into the guide and the chain and the cog should be sitting like that and now we can lower that in so this tall part goes to the front of the engine and that should lower in like so so I'm going to tie the chain up again and support it while we work on the, the rest of it and try not to uh, let it drop in because what I don't want to do is allow that bottom cog, the chain to come off that bottom cog while I'm working. So I just want it to have a bit of tension on it when it goes in there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my cogs back on. So that's the, that one says EX30, that's the exhaust which is this side. All right, so I'm just going to hand tighten that in, look down a bit. So that's that one. I don't want it very tight, I'm just going to take up the thread. Okay. Now I'm going to undo this, remove. Now, there's no tension on the bottom at all, so the cogs should all move freely at this stage. So, the next stage is to put the new guides in, which we have here. These two don't have washers, the small one has a washer. The small one goes in the top, and I'm just going to hand insert it. So goes into there bottom one's in by hand and that just puts the guide rail in the right position and you can see the cog the bottom cog in position ready to be clamped by the crank bolt so just be careful you don't cross the threads of course so I'm just going to slowly, gently wind these in. Right. So 
So that's that. While we're here, I'm going to put the bottom crank bolt in so that everything's in, in and is held in place. So we don't need it too tight yet, we'll talk that up later. And now I need to raise the engine to get to the top locator. So now I've got my extra long uh, bar and I'm going to try and position the engine so that I can get my bar onto it, which means moving it up and down until I can get there. So a bit lower perhaps. Right, that looks okay. Good. So now I can get onto that. I can wind that in. Okay, so that's the located in. So we're now in a position. Okay, pause it. We're now at the absolute essential part, the most crucial part of the operation, we need to torque up the bottom crank uh, and the two uh, top pulleys. If you don't do this, then they can come loose and then you lose timing and then the valves can hit the pistons and then you've written the engine off. So very, very important to get this next bit right. So for this operation, I use my digital torque wrench and this allows me to get the starting point right. So I've already set one of the memories to the bottom crank setting, which is 50 Newton meters, which is there. When I get to that, it'll beep. So that's 50. The 50 Newton meters is a starting torque and then you crank it a further 180 degrees. I found that this particular torque wrench, this is a Sealy, it's very good on the digital uh, Newton meter side, but on the, on the degree side, not so good. But I'm sure we can all pretty much work out 180 degrees anyway. And I'll show you how I do it. Pretty crude. I just use a breaker bar and I use an angle bracket. And so I measure my first 90 degrees by using this. And then I do two lots of 90, I've got 180. That's all, as simple as that. So there's my starting point and I just push my breaker bar through 90 degrees to there. And that's my first. This is where it gets a bit more tough because we've already turned it 90. So my second 90 is going to be... Uh, That's 180 on the crank. So that's the bottom one done. Took the bottom crank bolt. Now, before we talk these up, I'm going to put the cam chain tensioner in. So the chain is in the right position before we tighten up these uh, cogs. So down the back here, that goes in like that, and it tightens up against the white plastic area there. And if you remember, I've got my uh, Whizzy little device, which does a very quick job of tightening this up. So that's, the cam chain now is in position, it's tight. The next job is to tighten these. And the first stage is 20 Newtons, sorry, 20 Newton meters, and then 180 degrees. We have to make sure that our cogs are lined up before we go there. So, I'm now going to get my um, fancy torque wrench and set it to 20 newton meters. That's 20, that's already good to go. So now, I will torque this up to 20. It's just the starting point, 20. Good. Then I get my breaker bar. Now if you need to bring the engine up again to gain more access, it makes sense to do so. Right, so that's our starting point. I'm actually going to take it further back. So now I can take that 90 degrees quite easily. That's the first 90. There. That's the second. 90 degrees. Right, so that's that one done. 
and now for the exhaust. Okay, there's our start point. 90 degrees. Degrees. So we are torqued up. Cam chain is in and torqued. Right, cam chain is now in and torqued up. So now we've got to reassemble, which is basically a reversal of what we did before. So I'm going to do that now and I won't do much talking to it. I'll just talk, come back on camera when I've done it. And then I'm going to cycle the engine through a couple of turns by hand to make sure everything is okay. And then check the alignment by looking at that pinhole in the crank and the markings on the cam on the camshafts to make sure that everything has retained its position, which it's sure it should. So, see you in a minute. Right, so I've now reassembled the engine. And if you look here, we've got the engine mount back on. The new cam chain is in place. The guide at the top is in place. Everything's talked up, everything's in place. So, good. Then I'm going to take the car in the air and remove the locking pin. I'm just going to remove the flywheel locking tool so that's now out and I can rotate the engine. Stop. Now just before we go all the way down, I just want to remind you guys, release the, uh, the, the tensioner for this, which is that cog up here, and put this zip thing back in there, which is that piece of uh, equipment just up there that this drives the water pump. Unless you do that, your car will overheat at some point, so make sure that's back in. Easy to forget. So I'm now going to crank the engine over and make sure that things line up having gone one revolution. So, so this is rotating. Okay, that's gone round once. Gone round twice. We're in a good position here, that's vertical, that's vertical, that's on top, that's on top. Let's raise the car and let's make sure the cam, the, excuse me, the crank case locking tool goes in as it should do, as I fully expect it to. I'm gonna, I've rotated it and I know it's all good on top. So if this goes in, everything is lined up as I would expect. It's gone straight in, no issues. Right, spark plugs are going in. Uh, the next thing is to, um, bolt back the throttle body and don't forget that little nut underneath and uh, then the rocker cover goes on. Okay so the engine's all back together I'm just putting the front back on though it's a couple of things just to remember on this so this is key to get right if you get the uh, cable fitting wrong you'll be able to open the bonnet and uh, that's seriously inconvenient because the only way you can get the bonnet open if that's broken or not connected is reaching underneath to these locks here which is uh, not easy not easy at all so just be, take care when you're reassembling the engine beg your pardon when you're reassembling the front of the car to make sure this is all good and when you get this cable in properly let's show you how so the first thing is get this little bit of plastic in in its little hole clips in open this up this cable goes in and then you push it over so that it's out of that alignment and then pull it in that position there. So there shouldn't be any cable here, it's all in a straight line. Then clip it shut and then put these, if, if they still exist, put these back in the hole but then zip tie the whole thing to this strut. So. Providing you get that right, you'll be okay. So, all done. Car's back together. That's our old timing chain. And now, all that remains is to try and start the car. Now, if there's a short, sharp bang, it's time to save your money, buy a new engine, go and have a cry. All right, so uh, let's start the car and uh, see what happens. Sounds okay. There's just one more thing that I will uh, go through usually on this process and I'll just show you that now. So I'm on my diagnostic tool and what we need to do is to get the car to learn the new settings for the chain. The chain's changed, it's a different length. The uh, Vanos solenoids need to 
basically learn the new maximum minimum um, position. So I'm just going into, uh, here we go. Dear me, delete adaptations, variable valve time and control. So that's the first thing. All right, so we go into this and the adaptation values can be reset in the next few steps. We'll do that. The following adaptations are not deleted in the next steps. So this is just a, a prelim to the setting. That's fine. And now we're going to say, we'll just reset the steps. So next time it'll go through it. It was a turn, turn 15 is the ignition switch. So that comes off 15 seconds. And we're done. Switch on terminal 15, which is the ignition. And leave it on for 15, sorry, 10 seconds. That's okay for us, yes. Done. Now, the next thing I generally do is learning the new Valvetronic, li Valvetronic limit positions. So, we have done a repair on the timing gear. Happy with that. Switch off terminal 15. You can hear them moving around under the bonnet and that's done. So, press OK. So that's it. Timing chain replaced and the uh, Valtronic settings have been uh, relearned by the ECU. And that's everything. Thanks for watching. Any questions, let me know. I'll do my best to answer them.